Okay, so what good is a mole? Again, it allows us to measure macroscopically something that is sub-microscopic. We can make a consistent recipe of sugar water knowing that 342 grams in one liter solution is exactly one molar or one mole per liter. Why all the math? We were having so much fun talking about polar solvents and hydrogen bonds and heat and now math? Well, we had to learn about moles in under to understand about acids and bases. Not this kind of acids and bases, uh, but water has another trick up its wet sleeve. Every so often, water can dissociate or break into ions. That's right. Water can split into a hydrogen cation, which is just an electronless naked proton, and a hydroxide anion. This is fairly rare. Only about one molecule in 554 million water molecules does this in pure water. In people terms, this is equivalent to one person across the entire population of all of North America, and I mean from the Arctic Circle all the way down to Panama. In molecular terms, however, remembering that moles are very big numbers, there's still a lot of ions floating around. And these ions are way more reactive than just the water molecules that are already sticking to each other and doing all this fun stuff. So going back to molarity terms, the concentration of protons, which is what these square brackets here mean, uh, is 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. But of course, in pure water, the only source of hydroxide ions is from separating from a proton. That means the concentration of hydroxide ions is also 10 to the negative 7th molar. Again, these ions in solution are so much more reactive than the water molecules on their own and affect chemical reactions. What is actually happening isn't that there's a bunch of orphaned protons in the solution. The protons are donated to other water molecules, which act like cations. Uh, to, and they produce these hydronium ions, H3O+. But the accounting is still pretty much the same. In pure water, these ions cancel each other out charge-wise, but then life isn't all about just being pure water. Adding other ion compounds will change the balance of protons and hydroxide ions. Adding HCl to water will increase the proton concentration. Adding sodium hydroxide will increase the hydroxide ion concentration. Compounds that contribute protons are acids, and compounds that contribute hydroxide ions are bases. Graphically, here's what's going on. Acidic solutions have more protons than hydroxide ions, and in basic solutions, the opposite is true. In neutral solutions, the ion concentrations are equal. But here's a new wrinkle, the pH scale. Ooh, pH, pH, pH. You've probably heard of pH. What does it measure? It measures the concentration of protons. The pH is defined as the negative log base 10 of the molarity of hydrogen ions. A property of water is that the concentration of protons is typically in the range of 10 to the power of 0 to 10 to the negative 14th molar. The same is true of hydroxide ion concentration, only inversely, from 10 to the negative 14th to 10 to the negative 0. And in case you're fuzzy on how negative log numbers work, look here. Uh, 10 to the power of 0 is uh, just 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Uh, 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth, or 1 over 10 with 1 0. Negative 1 over 1 and a 0. Uh, 10 to the negative 4th is 1 over 10,000, or 1 over 1 with 4 zeros after it. So that's kind of easier to remember. The pH scale varies from 0 to 14. And we could calculate the pOH as well as the negative log of uh, as the negative 
hydroxide ion concentration. Uh, we don't typically calculate the pOH uh, because we know if we know the pH, we know the pOH. And why calculate things twice? It's kind of like flipping a coin and it comes up heads and you don't need to flip it over and say, oh, and the bottom was tails. That's just redundant. So we don't need to calculate the pOH. Uh, this is because of the inverse relationship between these two values. Put another way, pH plus pOH is equal to 14. If pH is 1, then the pOH is 13. The pH is 3, the pOH is 11. The pH scale is a logarithmic scale, which means that every change of one pH unit is a tenfold change in proton concentration. And because it's a negative logarithmic scale, bigger numbers mean fewer protons. So going from pH 7 to 5 means, a one, means 100 times more protons are in solution. You may have said or heard that pH is a measure of acidity, but usually when a scale increases in value, we think that there is more of that thing. 100 degrees is hotter than 80 degrees, but not so with pH. A lower pH value means more acidic. And that's kind of something that is, you have to kind of get your head around and keep it there. So let's look at some aqueous solutions and see where they sit on the pH scale. Strong acids include battery acid from a car battery, uh, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, gastric acid. Once it gets diluted, the pH increases a little bit. It's a little less acidic once uh, it actually gets from the stomach lining into the stomach. Um, lemon juice is very strongly acidic. Black coffee, one of my favorite drinks, is, uh, no cap, is acidic. Urine and saliva are weakly acidic. Blood, not shown on here, is just a little bit under 7. Very slightly basic. Uh, um, Seawater and ammonia are basic solutions. All the way down to bleach and oven cleaner and drain cleaner, which are all very powerful bases. So here's just another graphic representation showing that in an acidic solution, lots and lots of protons, not very many hydroxide ions, and the opposite is true in a basic solution. Lots of hydroxide ions, not so many protons free in solution. Ooh, ouch. Yes, that is a very mean joke. Okay, so here's another short video uh, by someone who's not me explaining acids and bases. <laughs> 